So you talked a lot about marriage and how God uses marriage to refine both people. We've talked about marriage, parenting, grandparents, but what about single believers? So what are some ways that God refines single believers? Because you know marriage refines people. So where should these single people who love the Lord be leaning into for growth and sanctification, not just relying on, I'll just wait till I get married? You okay if I go in and you jump on that? Okay. Uh, so God uses the very same things in all of our lives uh, to refine us and to sanctify us. Sanctification means to make holy or to make, be made like Christ. Jesus, when he prayed in John 17, prayed the high priestly prayer to the Father. He said, sanctify them according to your word. It's God's word that is the force of sanctification in our lives, but the playing field that that takes place is relationships. So if you're married, the most important relationship that you have besides you and the Lord is your marriage. And so God will use that relationship like sandpaper to refine you and to smooth you and to chisel things away that are not like Christ. What grit sandpaper would you think you are? Well, like, oh. <laughs> you probably need to ask her on that one. I might be more of a chisel. Um, <laughs> Uh, but the reality is sandpaper, you know, if you rub it against yourself, it, it irritates, right? But if you use it the right way, it smooths something and it refines it, right? So if you're single, God still uses relationships. He uses friends. He uses community. He uses mom, dad, siblings. Uh, so it's not that the only relationship that God uses to refine a person is marriage. It's a big one because there's no relationship like it, but all relationships are the refining uh, tool that God uses, and here's why. It's because you can be a scholar of the word, but it's not until you have to walk out the implications of the word that there becomes a price attached to it of, of humility, of repentance at times, of having to forgive, you know, forgiveness is difficult. Um, and so if you have no relationships, you have no need to forgive. One of the most sanctifying and refining aspects of our faith is having to deal with the weaknesses in one another and forgive and believe the best, and then also confront our own stuff. When we were first married, I, I'll admit it, I was very immature and relationally immature and uh, Jane was very gracious with me um, because I was like an only child. I liked things a certain way. Uh, and she learned to forgive really well uh, and learned to communicate to me things that she saw in me that she did not like. And then I had to learn to respond. I could either get very defensive about that or I could say, you know, I'm sorry and, and grow in that. So it doesn't matter whether you're married or you're single. Relationships, I, I think, are the primary way that God brings refining work into us. Totally. And I just think the whole thing with family, too, is like siblings. You know what I mean? Because you have them from the beginning and you learn conflict. And I mean, I remember with our kids, I'm like, if you cannot get along with each other, you're not going any, to anybody else's house. You're not going to bring something else to somebody else's house. But I'll be good there. I'll then be good here. So, yeah. yeah. So. And our, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> So my, so my follow-up to that is a, a lot of last week's message was, as a family, what do you do now to start leaving a legacy? Whether you're 10 years into that or just starting now. Um, but as a single person, what are things that you can do now to start leaving a legacy even before you have a family? What, you can become the, the complete person that you are in Christ, which is vital, you know, you, you, you are not incomplete because you are single. You are complete, you are whole in Christ. You are accepted, you are loved, you are whole, there's not a part of you missing. Now the desire of your heart might be to be married and that's great, but it should never be because I need somebody to complete me. Uh, it's, it, you are complete in Christ and so the process of discipleship uh, or of refining sanctification happens in your life and through relationships, but you can start developing who you are now, you know, get in community. I mean, we have, we have so many uh, groups, for example, small groups, that are opportunities for you not just to learn, 
you learn information in groups. You know, you go through a, a Bible study or you go through sermon questions and you pray for one another, but it's the relationships that are the agent of change. So nobody grows to full maturity in Christ outside of community. So you need community. You need friends. You need, uh, you need those spiritual siblings as well as your natural siblings. And so in really invest your life into friendships. Really, if you're single, invest your life into godly peers. And we have several uh, young adults that are around here that are, you know, they're single, they're not yet married, but they just have close friendships where they're really provoking and challenging one another to, you know, fulfill the call of God, to walk holy before the Lord, challenging each other, having fun together. And I think those type of relationships help you become complete and mature in Christ. And realizing that you'll never have that time again. You know what I mean? Like to have that right. focus on the Lord. You know what I mean? Like, like that. Right. Yeah. Exactly. So yeah, that's true.